Art Teachers of Reddit, what's your draw anything you want story? Not my story, but seems to fit here. When I was in school to certify to become a teacher, we had a former principal as a professor for one of our courses who was trying to illustrate how difficult it could be to manage parent complaints and how to approach those situations with administration. His example was how he had been called into a conference once with an angry mom and the elementary school art teacher. The mom was furious because the teacher had asked the children to close their eyes and draw whatever came into their imagination. His assumption was that a student had drawn something inappropriate. Nope. The mom was mad because summoning an image in one's mind was, quote, witchcraft. So, little Timmy, what did you draw in class today? I drew a rainbow. It's not drawing, but I gave my high school kids a poetry assignment. They could write about anything that was school appropriate and have one curse word that wasn't a slur or the F-bomb. It had to include so much figurative language and whatnot. Girl turns in, quote, Mrs. My Name is a B, a poem about how she's tired of writing poems and that she's annoyed with me for assigning so many. Includes our requirements. I gave her a 96, a few errors, and the next poem she writes is, quote, Mrs. My Name is a Cool B, about how she was sorry she was mean. I just remembered a poor little guy who drew a self-portrait. He drew with meticulous detail, and when it came down to drawing his pants, he drew the zipper so carefully, but it looked like a member. I was flummoxed about how to tell him that people might see something there that he didn't intend. My brother was told to draw an animal from any angle he wanted, so he drew a dot and said it was a very far away lion. I was substitute teaching an art class. An 8th grader drew a picture of an adult woman touching a child. I pulled the student aside after class and found out her aunt had been touching her for years when she was babysat or came to visit. I reported it, and her aunt ended up going to prison. Kids will sometimes draw things that they normally wouldn't say out loud. In early middle school, we did a project where we used cardboard draped in colorful paper mache to make a sound word, like wham or crinkle. I was really into knights at the time, so I made the word that was the sound of someone unsheathing a sword. That word was schlong. I got in trouble once for drawing a pooping butt. Little did my teacher know, but the drawing was actually a poorly drawn butterfly that ended up looking like a hairy pooping butt. And when asked why I put the details I did, like the legs, an antenna, and proboscidea coming off the segmented body, I said, I don't know, don't they all look like that? I saw one at recess and thought it was pretty and wanted to draw it. Thinking of the butterfly, of course. Nope. I ended up having to go see the school counselor. High school 1977. Not a teacher. While everyone else was drawing pink Floyd rainbows and peace signs all over everything, the biggest burnout in the class made a wide metal bracelet with intricate triangular designs cut out of it. He turned it in and got a great grade for the first project he ever bothered finishing and some well-deserved praise for his effort. Teacher handed our work back and first thing he did was grab a pair of pliers and bent all the triangles outward, making it a thick metal spiked bracelet. I found that devilishly, disturbingly clever. As a kid who was told to do a drawing that was going to be put on a plate, drew my cat doing a poo. I was asked multiple times if I wanted to redo it. I declined the offer. So, most of my life, I ate off a plate with my cat on it doing a poo as it was my plate, and still do. My siblings had similar plates with a car and a rocket ship. Mine is clearly much better. Was around 5 or 6 at the time, and totally worth it. Still had the plate. I have a quote, design your own monster Halloween lesson. Most kids draw cute ghosts or cool vampires. One seventh grader drew a sad clown hanging by a belt from a ceiling fan. He had issues. I ran arts and crafts classes at a youth group for disadvantaged kids. Decided one day to give them total freedom. I just put out all the supplies we had and let them go crazy. Kids made some really cool works of art, all very colorful and creative. I was talking to one kid when another asked me to help him spell things for his artwork. I go over to his table with him, and he's been making a card for a boy in his class at school. He tells me his friend's mom had just died from cancer, and he wanted to make a card for him to cheer him up, but he couldn't spell anything he wanted to write. He was 13 years old, and I had to help him spell out something like, Dear Blank, I am so sorry about your mom, but I will always be your friend and here for you. Love, Blank. I had to help him spell his own name. He made the card totally unprompted. I feel for the guy. He was totally sweet and caring for his friend and really smart. He just not got the help he needed. Went home after and had a little sob. Edit. Hey guys, thanks for the rewards. I really appreciate all the lovely things you've been saying. 
I'd just like to say that I really didn't do anything special here. I only helped him spell out a card. I wish I could have done more, but I was fresh out of high school and was only volunteering. I actually have been in one of the other youth groups they ran, and been asked to volunteer in this one as they needed more hands. I left shortly after this for university. I reported the incident to my supervisor, and she assured me he was getting the care and help he needed, but they could not tell me more for security reasons. He was the real hero here. I hope he and his friend are doing okay. Thanks again. One kid had to have a meeting with the principal, her parents, and the art teacher, because the art teacher decided that, because this second grade girl only drew people without hands, the little girl felt powerless. All these adults question this child about the meaning of her drawings. She tells them, hands are too hard to draw. Sometimes, only children can understand adult problems. And this is one of them. Why do we have so many fingers? Former student here. We were supposed to do a bit of abstract artwork for a course assignment. My work was a frame square cutout from an old t-shirt I had previously used to help restain an old table. Not only did I get an A on the assignment, but I entered it into a silent auction later that semester and someone bought it. When I was in the 7th grade, our art teacher had us do whatever we wanted to be entered in the school art fair. I was really lazy and just decided to use every color of pastel that was available to draw a rainbow of sorts on a piece of construction paper. Then, I tore it all into pieces and glued them all together again randomly. I called the piece Life, and argued that it was supposed to represent the chaos and uncertainty that is life. It ended up winning first place in my grades part of the art fair, and I ended up getting a cool art set, but really it was just me being lazy and feeding some BS about a deeper meaning. Reminder from your friendly neighborhood Reddit narrator that it's always a good idea to subscribe and like the video. Hit the bell to turn on notifications, and remember to subscribe to Am I the Jerk 2, linked in the description below. As always, thanks for watching! Perrin here, not an art teacher. In kindergarten, my son came home with a packet of finished assignments he got back from the teacher. One was a paper having them draw a body part with the prompt, Here are my. Example given was feet. What did my kid draw? Butt cheeks. Drawing of the back of a person with two giant, well drawn I might add, cheeks. My husband and I laughed our own butt cheeks off when we saw it. We kept the paper, for posteriority. Student here, my art teacher was somewhat crazy. She let us draw anything we want, and to get 100%, all you had to do was tell her it, quote, had a deep connection to the earth, or some other nonsense. I drew a jellyfish and told her it represented wisdom because it was immortal. When I was in second grade, our teacher told us to doodle on the back of a quiz if we finished early. I decided to draw a house high in the sky with a long staircase leading to it. To emphasize its height, I drew clouds, but it needed more. I decided to add in an airplane. Later, my teacher called me to her desk and I got in trouble because the plane looked like it was heading towards the house and this was right after 9-11 happened. Still have no idea what I was thinking. When I was in high school, part of the final exam slash assessments in art class involved picking an object of your choice based on a written passage and painting it as best as you can. My art teacher told us about one kid who chose a book as his object. He turned up with an art book with a professional still life painting on the cover and proceeded to recreate the painting stroke by stroke. If I recall correctly, there were phone calls made to his parents and to the board of education over it, but the kid got away with it in the end. I assume there were some changes to the rules after that. Edit. Since this is now my top comment, here's a bonus story about the same assessment. When the time for my own assessment came around, the object I chose to paint from the written passage was a skull. The next day, the teacher made his way around the class, asking students individually about their chosen objects. The art teacher was quite elderly, and he was quite a reserved and somewhat mysterious fellow. He had also taken a shine to me as I was pretty good at art and more enthusiastic than the others. He makes his way around to me and I tell him I want to paint a skull. And where do you plan on finding one, he asks. I told him I had seen one of those plastic replica skeletons in the biology lab, and I was going to ask about borrowing the skull. He blew off that idea as if it were complete nonsense. He paused for a moment, and then said a little more quietly, I can get you a skull. Um, okay, I replied, not knowing what he was getting at really. The guy goes off into his little storeroom, rummages for a couple minutes, and comes back with a real human skull in his hand. I politely asked him how he came by a real human skull. He turned his gaze away pensively and said, an old friend gave it to me, and left it at that. Not a teacher, but when I was in 7th grade, I drew a picture in my art class sketchbook of Barney and Elmo smoking pot and drinking booze. 
drawn with colored pencils and all. I showed it to my friends, and they thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever seen. The art teacher, however, was not pleased, and sent me to the principal's office. The principal then looked through my sketchbook and ripped out all the drawings she deemed as inappropriate. It shattered my soul that day, and I cried for some time afterwards. In fact, I think that's what ended my dream of becoming an artist. Screw you, Mrs. Boreno and Mrs. McKeon, for robbing me of a better future. When I was around 8 or 9, I got into drawing cars, and simultaneously into drawing tribal decorations. Probably not PC, but, you know, the type a lot of people get as a tattoo. So, I drew a car with a tribal decal, and because of the hook-like shapes in the tribal decal, I, inappropriately, named the car, quote, The Hooker. When she was done laughing, my mom took the time to explain the world's oldest profession. Whenever I got to draw something on my own, I just drew cake. I rarely let them draw whatever, because they inevitably would draw predictable cliches. Eighth grade boys would draw knives with blood dripping, or an eye, and girls a unicorn. Trying to get them to draw from life was tough. Not an art teacher, but for one year I was a preschool teacher a few years back. It was like a Friday at 4pm in the winter. I gave the kids some time to color or draw whatever they wanted. Ten minutes go by, and one of my students, four at the time, who I had a love-hate relationship with because he caused a lot of behaviors, but could be a sweet kid when he wanted to, came up to me and said, Look, Mrs. Blank, I made a drawing for you. I gave a warm smile and asked him to show it to me. It was a drawing of his parents doing the nasty. He even got the shaft part right with balls and everything. Totally shocked, but remained as neutral as possible, because I knew if I reacted in a major way, he would have continued to make more drawings like this. This is something I learned about him. So I said, let's put that in your backpack and we can show mommy when she picks you up. Dad comes that day. More embarrassing for me. I told him about the drawing and he turned bright red, explaining the other night he had walked in on them screwing. We awkwardly laughed about it and that was that. In ninth grade, as an end of the year project, we could basically draw whatever we wanted and we had a week to do it. Me, being the little car nerd I am, drew the entire drivetrain and suspension of a Chevy K5 Blazer. I'm a teacher, but I don't teach art. I was teaching a class of 7-year-olds who were usually a blessing, but there's just one kid who has some real problems. He can't speak English at all. Even after me spending a year trying to teach him and all his classmates progressing well, he just refuses to engage with any teacher and is extremely disruptive, often crying and screaming. I think he has special needs, but that's not handled well in China. Anyway, after battling and battling with him to no avail, assigning him, quote, class police roles, everything. I just gave up this one day and gave him some paper to draw on whilst the rest of the kids learn without him distracting them. He drew a picture of me with a large pee-pee and lots of knives in me with blood and wrote my name in perfect English. It was eerie, but I just felt sad and concerned what had happened to this boy. The school gave him no support, and I only saw him for about an hour a week. I left the school shortly after, unrelated, and wonder how he is now. I'm an art teacher, but this story is about my substitute teacher. I asked my students what they had been drawing when I was gone. The class was absolutely silent, apart from some boys that were giggling. They were 13 years old. I asked what was so funny, and they said the substitute was great. At the same time, the girls seemed as they wanted to disappear from the classroom. So I asked why the teacher was great. And the boys just exploded. He told us to draw flying cock-a-doodle-doo. Well, I don't have to say more than that substitute teacher never came to our school again. In junior high, my art teacher pulled me aside to tell me that she was really impressed because I could draw better than her. After that, she pretty much let me have free reign, as long as what I was drawing worked towards the lesson goal, such as shading, perspective, etc. For the end-of-year project, I did a Robotech Veritech fighter in Stipple, drawn only using dots. The next year, when I would have had her again for art, she paid out of pocket for me to take an art course at the community college across the street. She was an absolutely amazing teacher. Not a teacher, but in middle school, we got an assignment in art class to draw a still life of fruit. I thought the idea was totally boring and decided to put a creative spin on it. I drew a bunch of different fruits all sitting in the seats of a coliseum watching an apple kill an orange in the center ring. I failed the assignment, and my teacher even pulled me out into the hallway to tell me directly that she didn't like me or the work that I produced. Didn't let that crush my dream though, and I kept making my assignments weirder and weirder to tick her off. 
Reminds me of that time I got suspended in kindergarten for drawing a crappy stick figure gun. I tried to save myself that day by saying it was a water gun, since it was so crappy you couldn't tell the difference. But they weren't having it, and little Plava27 went home that day. Not an art teacher, but when I was in late elementary slash early junior high, my art teacher at the time gave us free reign. I had just learned what furries and pokemorphs were at the time. My art teacher, thankfully, just thought I couldn't draw werewolves for crap. When I was in high school, I was trying to learn how to draw perspective for the first time, and I was doodling a wolf howling, mostly because I enjoy wolves, and there's plenty of references online that I could check my work against. However, a seated howling wolf, when viewed from the front, doesn't show eyes or ears or most of the face, just an upturned muzzle and chin. I was actually kind of glad of this at first, because I sucked at positioning wolf eyes properly. I could draw pretty eyes, and I could draw heads a little, but put the two together, and it all looked wrong. So anyway, I'm drawing this wolf, and I think I'm doing a fine job of it, and I've got the muzzle and a bit of nose and the cheeks and the neck and the chest and all that, and everything looked fine. I was actually kind of proud of it. At least, I was until I got home, several hours later, and pulled it out again to work on it. You see, what confronted me at the end of the day was not my howling wolf, but what looked remarkably like a fuzzy, vaguely cone-shaped shaft with some kind of diseased black tip, all perched atop four paws and a tail. I've never drawn a howling wolf from that perspective again. In seventh grade, we were supposed to draw a fish made out of smaller fish. A few days earlier, I had learned that seahorses are fish, and I was obsessed with this small tidbit of knowledge and made a seahorse out of small fish. I got into a discussion with my teacher about whether I did the assignment correctly or not, 30 minutes and a Google search later, I got a C, which, fair, I wasn't the best painter. Not an art teacher, but my daughter in first grade was given an assignment to write a story and draw. She wrote and drew a story about Horny the Rhino. It amazes me how you can have names for animals that describe their appearances, like Fluffy the Cat, Scaly the Lizard, or the Blue-Footed Booby. Shoutouts to ornithologists for giving birds the best names. But as soon as you try and name a horned animal, you gotta get a little more creative, otherwise you end up like this first grader. When I was in the first grade, they had everyone in every grade draw something. It could be anything. I drew an evil snail that had gotten snatched up by a bird, and I had a voice bubble that said, I will be back, or something like that, coming from this evil snail. In the foreground, I drew my family. That was it. That was the whole picture. Flash forward to like six months and my really bad drawing was chosen as number one in the first grade. Then, the school had an assembly where they showed the top drawings from each grade. So, I go up to the front with the other winners and the principal goes through each one and says a little something about it. Eventually, they get to my drawing and I quickly realized why I was chosen. They thought the bird was a plane and the evil snail was my dad leaving to deploy. Important note is that this school was on a military base. My dad had never been deployed and was in fact depicted on the ground with the rest of my family, but I just stood there and accepted the award, and I never told another living soul because I was so embarrassed and guilty. I can honestly say I was one of the better artists at my school, asked to draw for the paper, designed t-shirts, mugs, etc., and voted outstanding senior in art. I taught calligraphy, and one of my logos became the state logo for the state science division. I'm also somewhat of a jerkwad. We were assigned an exercise to draw our offhand, left if you're right-handed, right if you're left-handed. I asked the teacher, how far would you like us to draw to? Her response, well, you can draw all the way up to your elbow or cut it off at the wrist. Your choice. So, I drew it cut it off at the wrist, with exposed bone, tissue, and pooling blood. She was real careful with her instructions after that. I was an art teacher for four years, and I have so many stories. So many stories. One that comes to mind is a drawing this strange little child who was oddly obsessed with me made me as a gift. Now, for context, my personal aesthetic is what my friends affectionately call, quote, adult tomboy goth, which is to say I wear all black, somewhat androgynous clothing, and have a penchant for the dark and absurd. Of course, in work environments, I dress more professionally, but my kids all knew I was a dark-humored little oddball and they loved me for it. So, this girl is doing free draw, and every time I walk over, she covers up the paper with her arm and hisses at me like a cat, as she was wont to do. After about an hour, she scurries over to me with this huge grin on her face and announces, 
Baba Yagatron, Baba Yagatron, I made you a thing. And my lord, oh boy, it was the best gift I have ever received from a child. The drawing was of a skeleton beckoning a crying girl with no eyes into a pre-dug grave. The gravesite was elaborately mapped out with the whole underground portion where the coffin would be, a tombstone, and little flowers around the tombstone. I laminated it, and to this day it is still on my bedroom door, even after three moves around the country. I miss teaching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.